So flying was awesome. We hit seven different airports in Georgia's Carbon Cub. Everything from private strips to Manchester International to get some gas. And it was just a blast. Met a ton of cool people, saw a ton of cool airstrips and can't wait to get the RANs uh, ready. So I can do it. Anyway, today, small change of scenery. We, uh, I'll put this on hold. I'm gonna mount the two switches so George can take that back and the ELT and whatever else he's got for me um, so he can continue working on that. So I'll work on that for today and then back on that. Mission accomplished. I uh, have these kind of just situated there where they look good. These are spaced one inch this way and then one inch this way. I was kind of overthinking it when I went in. And then I remembered I had a, a Mini Cooper. So I measured that. Those are actually one and an eighth or one and a sixteenth or something like that. But cars are always a little bit bigger than planes. So that worked out perfect there. Put the ELT this way and we do have a uh, vertical uh, display on it. I think it uh, just looks a little better. And that's it. Ready for George to wire. When George came over to pick up the panel, he dropped off the 650, which I got a mount. And kind of looking at it, this sticks out like three quarters of an inch, this sticks out three quarters of an inch, this sticks out three quarters of an inch. I made the super duper drawer that sticks out three sixteenths of an inch. So George was asking if we can bring the drawer out so they're all flush. Well, it got me thinking that, yeah, you could, you should. And I figured instead of bringing the drawer out, now I'm redoing all of my brackets to bring the Garmin components in. Like I said, because I don't have anything better to do. But uh, I think it'll look good. Here's what I did. The original mounting, oh, the original mounting was like this, with this being the, the face of the panel and then the components uh, bolt to that. So that is the way Aerosports has it in the newest um, instructions. All I'm gonna do now is basically make the same piece. I'm gonna mount it to the back side. So I copied all those. That's gonna mount to the back side. So it's gonna move all the components back a half an inch. And if you look at some of the pictures, the older pictures in the Aerosports instructions, I believe that's actually how they had it mounted originally. So I don't know why they changed it, but um, I'm gonna go back and do it this way. Hopefully it doesn't bite me in the butt. And this way all the com Garmin components will be moved back and it'll look a lot more flush. The G3X has a lip on it that's maybe Five sixteenths or a quarter inch, I don't have it here right now. So it's gonna look a lot more like that rather than sticking out the three quarter inch. So yeah, wish me luck. All right, I get those uh, mounted. I'm gonna rivet them. I just have them click out in right now. I had to uh, cut this part out because I wanna retain this for structural to mount to the back. And I needed it here as a spacer that's why this continues down the inside because this is where I had originally uh, set up that way. So that's looking good. But here comes a little, another Garmin rant. I was already complaining because these holes are not symmetrical left to right. And from the face to the center of the hole of the autopilot is one and one sixteenth, which is fine. This guy, the commune is one and one sixteenth. Then this guy, the 750, is one and three sixteenths. So basically, if you line up all the mounting holes, this guy's gonna stick out an eighth of an inch over the other ones. I know it's petty, but come on guys. And I have the cage mounted all the way in case you're wondering about this gap here. It's, it's, it's in, but uh, just kind of frustrating. But I'm glad I caught it now before I drilled all my holes. So that's what I'm talking about. Left side, right side. This is the cage for the autopilot. But look at the holes. They're off by like an eighth of an inch. So if you make it straight, it's gonna be crooked. So you better make it crooked. And after all that, I got it backwards. The high hole is supposed to be on this side and the low hole is supposed to be on this side. Yeah, I'm a little mad. So the choice was to go to bed because I'm tired and it's nine o'clock at night and 
I've been on it since nine o'clock this morning. Well, the other stuff. Or whip up another one. And I'm guessing that practice makes perfect because I think the very first set I designed a long time ago, which was on the outside with the spaced out, probably took me the better part of an entire day. This set that I did this afternoon took me, with the redesign, probably two or three hours. And this one took like 30 minutes, but I haven't drilled the holes yet. Pray I don't mess them up. And I think I know what I did wrong because I just about did it again. I was holding the cage in this way, so the Garmin reads nice, but of course it goes this way, and that's how I get the holes backwards. Third time's a charm. Got them all in. They're back about a half an inch, now flush with the door. Uh, I'm almost thinking, I'm gonna, I don't know how the gap was so big, you didn't notice it before, but it might add a little more plastic to the little magic drawer. And, uh, yeah, there you go. Perfection. And next up, I'll build some kind of structure to support all this back here. But we'll leave that for tomorrow. Time to go to bed. Good night. So I've been going round and round in my mind of what's the easiest way to do this. And I think I'm going to make a little piece of 40 thousandths. Um, that angles out that's about two inches wide so it can catch two or all three of these holes this hole and it secures down here so that will certainly keep it up and down strong and then I'm thinking of actually extending it a little higher maybe three quarter of an inch up here and putting uh, a brace that rivets to the top of the boot cowl and screws into it as well so two screws here two screws up there and that will a add rigidity to the boot cowl which can't hurt but also keep these things from swinging left to right so i don't know we'll see how that goes that was pretty uneventful uh two inches with a half inch lip for rigidity um Supposed to sit about three quarters of an inch here. There'll be two screws down here, one screw. I'm just gonna use one of the screws in there because I don't, you can see where the Clicos are, but how in the hell are you supposed to get a screwdriver? Or this one, you could get an angle screwdriver in, but this one, you're honestly better off like going through the side here to get that screw in with a long screwdriver. So hopefully they don't have to come out a lot. And I left it a little bit long up here. Like I said, I might put a brace there. But anyway, tonight's a short night, but got that done. And uh, good night. Kind of just a random update. I haven't really filmed anything the last couple of days, but uh, been working on, I don't know, boring stuff. So I took that out. These are the braces in there. I redid these, put all the cinch nuts uh, cinch nuts in just very time consuming I'm not even sure what I really did uh, at work I made uh, acrylic trim ring to go around it oh I also modified the drawer uh, because that little gap that was there so I lifted this up and I used the switch guard the leftover switch guard um, as a, as a handle before I had a little black thing. Shortened it a little bit there and rounded the corners to the same angle that matches this. So it just looks a lot nicer. Then while I was in here, I had misdrilled these holes because I mounted our CO detector backwards. So I made a little bracket that now can hold it and keep it from flopping and turbulence. Did more work down here. These are the side pieces. I'm probably gonna drill three holes to kind of mimic lightning holes. But honestly, the main reason is to get at these screws, because it's a bear to get in there with angle screwdriver or uh, I have a skew driver as well. So if you do have to service this and you can just take one of the screens out, you can actually get a screwdriver through there. So the blue part is the cutout where that is. So basically there'll be a lightning hole looking hole there 
and you'll get be able to get screwdrivers in. That's the plan for that, but uh, yeah, like I said, just an update. I don't feel like I've done anything other than take everything in and out a million times, but uh, going to bed, good night. So I have this uh, in with my fake lightning holes, and uh, it's kind of what I'm talking about, like to get at these screws, if you do go in through the side, at least it allows you to get a screwdriver in this way and tighten them versus having to fight through inside here. I can't recall if I've uh, expressed any frustration with the accuracy of these mounting holes on these Garmin cages, but uh, when I first measured the distance from the comm unit to the 650 of these rear mounting holes, I was like, okay, yeah, it looks like it's one and a half inches, so that's what I based all of this on. And uh, wouldn't you know it, just to bust my nuggets, it's actually, when I went to put it all together, there was like this odd tension because I have countersunk screws that go in here. It was kind of tweaking it a little bit. And uh, come to find out, it's not one and a half inches. It's one and a half and a sixteenth. So whatever that is, nine sixteenths. So uh, time to re-engineer. But in a way, uh, I have a reason to redo it. I'm actually going to take out these clinch nuts here because the heads, because these holes in here for 632nd screws are so big that they don't actually fit tight, like they bottom out the countersunk screw. So I'm actually gonna put uh, nut plates in here that'll mount from this side and that'll allow me to open up the hole uh, a 30 seconds in this direction and those in that direction. That should solve the problem. So if you're planning on doing a fancy little aviation rack with all precise drilled holes and mounting, don't bother. I would just uh, treat it like drywall. Just stick them in there, wherever they go. Got my nut plates in, happy with that. That all worked out good. But then I got the next curveball. As I'm looking at this, this was buckling in the middle because from here to here is six and a quarter exactly. And from here to here is like six and three eighths, almost six and a half. And if you look at the geometry of the cage bolting to this, I guess I forgot the thickness of that, which goes on to here. So I got to put some spacers in there. No problem. I can tackle that too. And there they are. Um, I ended up using half inch, uh, sorry, half inch wide, 60 thousandths thick. And they line up with two and a half inches there, one and a, half, uh, one and a quarter down there. And I riveted on with uh, the rivets that hold the nut plates on. All right, assembly attempt number 482. All right, I have it all together and I have to say it fits awesome. I put the nut plates down there. I did put a nut plate in here. I'm using cinch nuts in here. Hopefully they won't let go. And put all this back in. Got our CO sensor there, tracks for the fancy drawer. Uh, this is angled to contour the boot cowl. Like I said, I might put a little support up there. And uh, yeah, really, really happy with it. Everything seems to be pretty true. And now I got a rivet these pieces onto that and hope it all fits.
And there's the cool center stack. Uh, this acrylic trim ring is just for sizing. So that's actually eighth inch. The aluminum is going to be a little bit thinner. And uh, I do like the way the units sit flush in there. The drawer now sits flush. A little uh, handle from the switch guard. Looks really, really cool. I really, really like it. It was a lot of work, but I like it. Um, so my idea was to attach this to the boot cowl to keep it from shaking. But in all honesty, like the whole plane moves when I when I move that. It's it's pretty rock solid. So I'm gonna hold off on that. Uh, I'll show you the back side. These are all the brackets again. This contours around there spacers inside here to space this properly because what happened is this was buckling and was causing the, the drawer to uh to rub this goes on here that's solid even without these it hangs in there really solid because all the screws and this is the other side everything's 100 percent symmetrical um nut plates wherever i could these are the cinch nuts, which can be kind of problematic sometimes. So you just have to start them all by hand, take them in and out by hand. That's what I do. And yeah, that's it. George has the G3X panels, but uh, yeah, I like the drawer. It has a lock in it. Like you can feel like you really have to tug it. So it, uh, it can't pop open during flight, but good place to put sunglasses, oxygen. No, no keys. And uh, yeah, I think that'll finish this video. So good night. This took a lot longer than I expected. But I do want to get it back to George so he can uh, continue with the wiring. And I will be back on the center console. All right, thank you for watching. Happy flying.